everybody welcome back to my channel be quiet. today I have my little co-host next to me if you, if, you can, if you hear him over here their challenge and if you haven't seen any of my other videos it is by Alex and Stephen Kendrick and it is a 40-day marriage challenge and you should go check out my other videos and because we are on day 19 <laughs> Hi, other mommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come here, they can't see you. Look. Oh, yeah. There you are. Yeah, I need to get over here so I can see you. Oh, okay. So, today's is... Okay, I guess he's going to be in my lap while I do today's. Um, is it day 19 and it's love is impossible. Uh, I'm another mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And that's 1 John 4, 7. I hope y'all can pay attention <laughs> with this little one here. But it's mom life, right? It's if you're me. not a mom, yeah. why? Call me James. Well, you can imagine. Okay. The love there starts with a secret. And though it's... Mm -hmm. And though it's been an Coins. unspoken element throughout each Coins. day. Coins. Coins. He loves money. Hold on. Money. Okay, James, if you're going to sit here, you need to listen. And be quiet, okay? But okay, you need get, get the, get the money. Okay. Okay, Oops. can you sit here and be quiet so they can listen to me read? Yeah, okay. Okay. The love there starts with a secret. And though it's been an unspoken element throughout each day, you've likely grown more and more aware of it all the time. The secret is this. You cannot manufacture unconditional love, agape love, out of your own imperfect heart. It's impossible. It's beyond your natural ability. It's beyond all of our capabilities. You may not want to believe that. You may be convinced that with enough hard work and commitment, you can muster up unstoppable, lifelong, and sacrificial love with, with them. And while, yes, you may be able to demonstrate kindness and patience at times, while you may have learned to be more thoughtful and considerate than before, the task of sincerely and consistently loving someone unselfishly and unconditionally is another matter altogether. How many times, for example, has your love failed to keep you from deceiving or manipulating, from lusting or envying, nom, from overreacting nom, 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 nom. or exaggerating, or from thinking judgmental or unkind nom, thoughts? Nom, 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 nom. How many times has your love proven incapable of controlling your anger? How many times has your love failed to motivate you willingly, apologize, fully forgive, or bring about a peaceful into an ongoing argument and i said about that is maybe a handful of times um it it's this failure that exposes mankind's sinful condition our own sinful condition we've all fallen short of god's standards and commands and that's romans 3 23 and i underlined that and i said that that sentence really hits me to the core and i'll read it again it says we've all fallen short of god's standards and commands that's romans 3 23. we've all demonstrated selfishness hatred and pride unless something is done to cleanse us of all the ungodlike attributes we will all stand before god displeasing him to him that's psalms 5 4. guilty is charged romans 6 23 that's why if you're not in right relationship with god you cannot truly love your spouse because he is the source of the love i i'm always looking for money too can you no i can't okay well i'll help you as soon as i'm done with this video okay you can't give what you're you don't have. You can't call up reserves that aren't read already there. Selfish springs do not produce selfish water. Just as you can't give away a million dollars that you don't have, you cannot pay out love in greater measure than you own. You can try, but you will fail. He's trying to pet the cat now. Beast. 
Be soft. I'm sorry, guys. Gentle. Love that is faithfully pure and able to withstand every pressure is out of your reach as long as you're only looking within yourself to find it. You need another source. You need someone to give you that kind of love. But here's the good news. Because of God's great love for you and his love for your spouse, he has made a way to express his love through you. Love is from God. And that's 1 John 4, 7. I underlined that because I really like that. Love is from God. Good job, James. 1 John 4, 7. The scriptures consistently communicate that the way we discover love is by turning to God's Son, Jesus Christ, who was sent to earth to be the example and source of a perfect love. You found money! Yay! You need to tell me your secret. It's only when we turn our lives in control of, control of us that our deepest need for love is met and our greatest ability to love begins. Like a branch... Shh, okay, you be quiet. Like the branch disconnected from the vine, Jesus said, Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. This includes loving your spouse unconditionally. But if you abide in me, he went on to say, And my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And that's John 15, 7. The word abide means to stay rationally close. This is not religious jargon, but a spiritual invitation. By entering into a daily relationship with Jesus, you can know the love of Christ was past his knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3.19 You can then love unconditionally. By surrounding yourself to Christ, his power can work through you. He is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. And that's Ephesians 3.20. That's how you love your spouse. So your inadequacy and inability, as defeating as they may feel, have a happy ending if you will reach out in faith and receive the love God has for you. Then the love he has poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was giving a, given to us, Romans 5, 5, will always be available to you every time you admit your inadequacies and trust in, trust in his ability. You simply won't be able to do it without him, but people are constantly discovering that they can with him. Perhaps you've never given your heart to Christ, but you sense him drawing you today. You may be realizing for the first time that you too have broken God's commands. Broken God's. And that your guilt will keep him from knowing him. It, My scripture says that. that if you repent by returning away from your sin Mommy, and turning yeah, to God, right here. Yeah, he's right. willing to forgive you because of the sacrifice his son made through his death on Mickey the cross. Make him out. Mickey Mouse. He's pursuing you not to enslave you, but to free you so you can receive his love and forgiveness. Then you can share it with the one you've been called Mickey most Mouse. specifically to love. Mickey Mouse. Perhaps you're already a believer, but you would admit that you have walked away from the fellowship with God. You're not in the Word. You're Mickey not Mouse. In okay, baby. You're not in the Word and you're not in prayer. Maybe you're not even in church anymore. The love you used money. to feel coursing through your veins money, have dwindled into apathy. Yes, baby. The truth is you cannot live without him and you cannot love without him. But there is nothing telling that he could do in your marriage if you choose to put your trust in him. Mommy, just hold me my for a minute. Hold me my for a minute. Hold me money. Please. Okay, here, put it in my hand. Okay, so I, so, now. Okay. Today's dare. Look back over the dares you, from previous yeah. days. Do they reveal a difficulty in your ability to love your spouse? Yeah. Did some seem impossible? Have you realized your need for God to change your heart and give you his ability to love? 
Ask him to show you where you stand with him. Ask him to show you where you stand with him and to give him grace to seek him, find him, and walk with him. Okay, James. What do you believe God is saying? Shh, James, this is serious. What do you believe God is saying to you? Is there a stirring in your heart? What decisions have you made in response to this? And I just went ahead and did this. I want to go down and look for that stuff. Okay, go look for the dog. Right and I said, I know that God I wants me to get back into this word. Stuff. You found back, so good deal. I've been trying to find time to get back in. Find time. Sorry. Find time. I hate to say that because we should always have time to read the word. My excuse, which shouldn't even be an excuse, is that I am a mother and a wife and I'm always ta taking care of others and never have enough time for myself. That's my Bible reading time. Lately, the only thing I read with the word lately is the devotional. I occasionally read books that are Christian based, but it isn't a study of the word. I've read the whole Bible once and would love to do it again and study it over and over again and know God's word inside and out. That's my goal anyway. I am going to really work on finding time to read and study my Bible. I don't have any issues loving David, but I do want to work on loving him with, a, with my whole heart like he deserves. None of the dares have seemed impossible. I have realized I need God so that I can give David the love he deserves, and I am not selfish with my love. And some of the some things that actual things they have written down here is that this is impossible with God, and all things are possible. Matthew nineteen twenty six. I really liked, and I wanted to share was I realized that the love dare journey is really about me forming my relationship with God, and that was by a lady named Connie. Mm. All right, I hope that you could comprehend um, all that and and uh, could understand what I was um, saying with a little extra going on. But I will be back tomorrow. All right, hold on, and I'll talk to you about day twenty. Twenty? Say hi, everybody. Welcome to this video. <laughs> <That's> so cute. <laughs> all right. Uh, now we're on day number 20. Three. And it is... Is Saturday. Love is Jesus Christ. And it says, While we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And that's Romans 5, 6. Do you feel loved by God? You should. Deeply. You will never fully love others until you, you first grasp his love for you personally. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And that's 1 John 4, 8. God not only loved you and how he created you and has provided every breath and sustained your life, but he loved you the most through the gift of his son. And the most famous verse in the Bible says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And that's John 3.16. For centuries, millions of people around the world have found God's love and relationship with him through these truths. The truths that summarize, summarize God's great love for you personally and his greatest offer to you now. Jesus has come to seek and to save you, Luke 19.10, but from what? The Bible explains we are, we are each born in a selfish state that is bent towards sin. That's Psalms 51.5. Yes, those are daddy's cookies. But are we like then we, by our own choosing, become prideful, deceitful, hateful, lustful, resent, resentant to authority, and ungrateful. Neither fearing God or knowing God. That's Romans 3, 9 through 10. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all the righteous deeds are like filthy garment. And that's Isaiah 64, 6. 
But God looked down on the earth and saw mankind in our ignorance and dirty condition. That's Psalms 14, 2 through 3. He knew that without his intervention, we would have no hope of purifying ourselves or becoming good enough to walk with him or spend an eternity with him in heaven. He also knew that his justice would require judgment upon our sins. And that's Romans 6, 23. It's not as though God sends innocent people to hell. We stand guilty. We deserve it. Every last one of us. And that's Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. However, in his love and mercy, God has sent his only begotten son to the world so we might live through him. And that's 1 John 4, 9. Jesus Christ bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live a righteousness. And that's 1 Peter 2, 2 24. By his death, Jesus forever made inv invalid that very idea that you are not loved. If you ever feel unloved, you're not looking at the cross. He proved his love for you there. Love this deep cannot be fully understood. One will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. In the while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5, 7 through 8. Nor can love like this be earned. For by the grace you have been saved through faith, and, the, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. That's Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. But it must be received. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's Romans 10, 9. And when you have received this new life and love as your own, you're able to love in the ways you've never been capable of loving before. This is how we know what Jesus is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. This is his command. To believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. That's 1 John 3, 16 and 23. Every failure in your life, all the good you haven't been able to do, every minute you've wasted, all of it can be forgiven and made right by putting your life into the hands of the one who first gave his love and life for you. Maybe you've never done this. Then today is your day. Now it is acceptable time acceptable time behold it now is the day of salvation that's second corinthians 6 2. maybe you did it years ago but you've wandered far from your spiritual roots then repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times refreshing may come from the presence of the lord that's x 319 he was willing to love you even though you didn't deserve it even when you didn't love back he saw all your flaws and still chose to love you. His love made the greatest sacrifice and meet your greatest need. As a result, you are able, by His grace, to walk in the fullness of, of a blessing of His love. And now and forever. And then you can experience and share the same love with your spouse. You can love even when you're not loved in return. You, you can see all the flaws and imperfections and still choose to love. And you can become his instrument, one of the most personal ways he meets the needs of, you, of your spouse. As a result, they can walk in fullness of blessing of your love, now and till death. True love is found in Jesus Christ. And after you have received his loving gift of new life, his sacrificial, sacrificial death in your place, and his forgiveness for your sins, then you'll finally ready to live the dare. And today's dare is... Dare to trust what God is saying to you through his word. Dare to trust Jesus Christ for your salvation. Dare to pray, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But you have shown your love for me by dying to forgive my sins. And you have proven your power to save me for the death of your resurrection. Lord, change my heart and save me by your grace. Fill me with your love says, write about the experience has been like for you. And if you have only renewing your commitment to receive and express his love that he has shown you today. And I wrote, I was very little riding in the car with my dad when I learned about Jesus dying on the cross for my sins. I was 10 in the 
in the tenth, fourth grade when I became saved in my Wednesday Bible study. I drifted away from the Lord in the beginning of my college years. I took It took me a while to get back, but I'm proud to say I've overcome all that and I ran back into the Lord's arms and he greeted me with a big hug and has blessed me with a husband and two beautiful children, a boy and a girl. All I've ever wanted by being a believer, I feel all I ever wanted by being a believer, I feel like I can be a blessing to my family. And a, a passage that goes along with this is Isaiah 63, 9. It is, in his love and his mercy, he redeemed them. I also have a, um, to learn more about salvation Christ offers you, I have more information about that. So let me read that to you. How can I find peace with God? Even after going through day 20 of your love dare, you may still be unsure about your relationship with God. But nothing should prevent you from receiving and experiencing His love for you at this very moment, and by able to love your spouse from the boundless reservoir of strength. Here's how the Bible describes this supernatural reality. God created us to please and honor Him. But because of His pride and selfishness, every one of us has fallen short of our purpose and dishonor God at different times in our lives. We we have all sinned against him, failing to bring him the honor to glory he deserves from each of us. And that is in Romans 3.23. If you claim to be a good person, be honest with yourself. And ask if you have ever dishonored God by lying, cheating, lusting, stealing, rebelling against authorities, or hating others. Not only do these sins may cause consequences... In your life, but they disqualify us from being right before God and living with Him in heaven for eternity. Because God is holy, He must reject all that is sinful. And that's Matthew 13, 41 through 43. And because He is perfect, He cannot allow us to sin against Him and go unpunished, or He would not be a ju just judge. That's Romans 2, 5 through 8. The Bible says that our sins separate us from God and that the wages of sin is death. And that is Romans 6.23. This is death. The death is not only physical, but the resulting spiritual death brings separation from God for eternity. What most people don't realize is that occasional good deeds do not take away our sins or somehow cleanse us from God's eyes. In God's eyes. If they could, then we could earn our way into heaven and... Negate the justice of God's against sin. God against sin. This is not only impossible, but it denies God the honor he deserves. The good news is that God is not only just, but he also loving and merciful. He has provided a better way for us to have forgiveness and come to know him. Out of his love and kindness for us, the Bible says he spent his he has sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for in our place and shed his blood to pay the price for our sins. The, this provided a pure sacrifice and just payment to God for our sins and allowed Jesus to receive the judgment we are due. Jesus' death satisfied the justice of God while also providing a perfect demonstration of the mercy and love of God. Three days after Jesus Christ, God raised himself to life as our li living redeemer to prove that he is the son of God. And that's Romans 1, 4. God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5, 8. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And that's John three sixteen. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have been given the opportunity of being forgiven and then finding peace with God. It may not seem right that salvation is a free gift, but the scriptures teach us that God wanted to reveal how rich His grace and kindness are toward us by offering us salvation for, for free, as Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. He is now commanding all people everywhere to repent and turn away from their sinful ways and humbly trust Jesus for their salvation. By surrendering your life to his lordship and control, you can have forgiveness and freely receive everlasting life. 
the wages of our sin of death but the free Daddy. gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's Romans 6.23. If you confess Daddy. with your mouth just as if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be received you will be saved. Romans 10 9. Millions of people around the world have found peace with God through surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ. But each of us must choose for ourselves. If there are anything stopping you from surrendering your life to Jesus right now, if you understand you need to be forgiven and raised to begin the relationship with God, we would encourage you to pray now and trust your life with Jesus Christ. To Jesus Christ, sorry. Be honest with God about your mistakes and your need for His forgiveness. Resolve your, to turn away from your sin and to place your trust in Him and that He did on the cross. And what he did on the cross. Then open your heart and invite him into your life to fill you. Change you, your heart and take control. If you are not sure how to communicate this to him. Then use this prayer as a guide. Lord Jesus, I know that I have sinned against you and deserve the judgment of God. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. I choose now to turn away from the sins and ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, I'm making you the Lord and boss of my life. Change me and help me now to live the rest of my life for you. Thank you for giving me a home in heaven with you when I die. Amen. If you just prayed sincerely and gave your life to Jesus Christ, then we congratulate you and encourage you to tell others about your decision. If you really meant it, then you need to take some important steps in your spiritual journey. First, it's essential that you find a Bible teaching church and tell them that you want to obey Christ's command to be baptized. This is a great mile marker that allows you to publicly identify with Christ. Share your faith with others and launch your new spiritual walk. Plug into your new church and start attending on a regular basis and sharing life with other believers in Jesus Christ. They will encourage you, pray for you, and help you grow. We all need fellowship and accountability. Also find a Bible you can understand and begin to read it for a few minutes every day. Start in the book of John and work your way through the New Testament. As you read, ask God to teach you how to love him and walk with him. Begin to talk with God in prayer and thank him for your new life. Confess your sins when you fail and, and to ask for what you need. As you walk with the Lord, take advantage of opportunities God loves you to share your faith with others. The Bible says, In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And that's in 1 Peter 3.15. There is no greater joy than to know God and make Him known. God bless you. I really do hope that if you're ready to take that new step, if you haven't done so already, set to pray that prayer because you won't regret it. Um, I, I told my story about how I was a young child and I, I, I don't want to say that when I went to college I totally left, but I definitely, I mean I've always had God in my heart and he never left there. I just melt, didn't always make the right decisions, but I, but I have come back and I have been blessed several times over since then. So I think this was a very important um, day in this challenge. All right, see you soon. All right, this is day number twenty-one, and it is love is satisfied in God says the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire. And that says Isaiah 58, 11. Day 20 was a vitally important day in the love there and hopefully in your life. As we discuss the glaring need of every human heart, you may have already known or just come to realize that nothing in your toolbox of talents and resources could wash away the stains or repair the damage that the sin has left behind. And that Jesus is the one sent by God to supply what you've been missing.
If you received him by faith and have turned your life over to him to lead, then his Holy Spirit, this very moment, is renewing and fulfilling your heart. And filling your heart. His grace and power can now be released into everything you do, including, not the least, your own marriage. But whether this is new territory for you or you've long been a follower of Jesus, now is the time to firm up one thing in your mind. You need God every single day. Because He alone can satisfy. Walking with Him is not a part-time proposition. Too often people think money, fame, accomplishment, or power will make them happy. And I said, mom would be accomplishments like being perfect mom and wife. I don't want to do it. I do want to do it through God though. Uh, then it goes on and says, King Solomon attained all of these things in great measure and repeatedly discovered that all the vanity and striving after wind. And that is Ecclesiastes 2, 1 through 25. He, con he concluded that since all good things come from God's hand, who can have enjoyment without him? That's verse 25. And yet, whenever we feel low on happiness, we often think it's because of something we want but don't have. And I really like that, so I underlined it and I'm going to repeat it again. And yet, whenever we feel low on happiness, we often think it's because of something we want but don't have. We don't realize that God did not create things on earth that we can satisfy us more than he does, even our spouses. He formed the longings within us so that we would seek him and be filled with his heavenly supply. True and everlasting love, joy, peace are found only in him. And that is in Galatians 5.22. Your husband may be late coming home again. But God will always be right on time. Your wife may have let you down again. But God can always be trusted to deliver on his promises. Every day you're placed expectations on your spouse. Sometimes they, they, they meet them. Sometimes they don't. But never will they be able to satisfy totally all the demands you ask of them. Partly because some of the demands are... Are unreasonable and partly because your mate is only human. God however is not and those who approach him in the utter dependence each day for the real needs in their lives are the ones who find out just how dependable he is. Can your spouse give you inner peace? No. But God can. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpass all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that's it. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Can your spouse enable you to be content no matter what life throws at you? No, but God can. I have learned to be con content in whatever circumstances I am. I am. The Apostle Paul said, In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And that is Philippians 4, 11 through 13. So stop expecting someone or something to keep functioning fulfilled on a non-stop basis. It's not fun for you or fair for them. Only God can supply all of your needs according to his riches to glory to Christ, in Christ Jesus as you learn to depend on him. And that's Philippians 4 and 19. Your needs for love, intimacy, acceptance, peace, joy, and adequacy are real. No one is saying you shouldn't have them, but rather than trying to fill them by plugging into things that are unstable at best or are subject to change, your health, your money, even the affections of the best intentions of your mate, plug it into God instead. He's the only one in your life who never changes. His faithfulness, truth, and promises to his children will always remain. That's what you need to speak, to seek him every day. When you pursue happiness through earthly things, you end up missing God and not being happy either. I underlined that because I like it, so I'm going to repeat it. When you pursue happiness through earthly things, you end up missing God and not ha being happy either. But when you lose yourself in pursuit of loving and pleasing him, 
You not only get an intimate relationship with God, but he also gives you happiness as gravy on the side. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's in Psalms 37, 4. When you are seeking him first, loving him first, making your relationship with him top priority, he promises to pleasure you with what you really need, which actually is all it really takes to satisfy you. And again, I underlined that. So when you are seeking him first, loving him first, making relationship with him top priority, he promises to supply you with what you really need, which actually is all it really takes to satisfy you. Jesus once spoke to a woman at a Samaritan well who had tried getting her hands met through five different failed marriages. But standing there before him with both her life and her water bucky, bu bucky, bucket empty, she found in Christ what he called living water. And that's John 4, 10. A supply that wasn't just for quenching temporary thirst. He offered her a drink of a soul satisfaction that never quits giving and refreshing. And that is what is available to you at each sunrise and each night before bed, no matter who your spouse is or what they've done to you. In your presence is fullness of joy. King David wrote to God, In your right hand there are pleasures forever. Psalm 1611. God is your everyday supply of everything you need. Okay, today's dare. Be intentional today about making a time to pray and read your Bible. Try reading a chapter out of Psalms or Proverbs each day or reading a chapter in the Gospel Book of John. As you do, immerse yourself in God's love and find rest in the promise and peace He has for you. This will add to your growth as you walk with Him. And then it says, how do you think spending time daily with God will change your situation and perspective? How can you make him a bigger part of your day? And I already um, did this there, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I said. I said, I want to get up early like 5 a.m., read my Bible, do a devotional and Bible study, and write it in my journal. But right now, I am not going to bed early enough to do that, so I am trying to do that all at night before I go to sleep. I have a three-month-old daughter who likes to stay up at 3 a.m. So I try to get my Bible study in then instead of getting up at 5 a.m., which I prefer, but I can't do that right now. It will change my situation and perspective because if I am reading my Bible and trying to be a Christian, Christian Christ-like, then others will see that and it might rub off onto them and all of our situations and perspectives will be better. I will make God a bigger part of my day trying to be what He wants me to be and do what He would make him proud. I will stop what I am doing throughout the day and ask myself if what I am doing would make God proud. Am I doing what a Proverbs 31 woman would be doing? I love Proverbs 31 if you didn't know. Um, and then another, <clears throat> sorry, the Bible verse that goes with it is, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. That's Psalms 145, 16. And a girl named Samantha said, I really believe that God can make it possible to work through any situation. The love there is pro proving my belief. All right, so that's the end of today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss any of our videos. I hope this Bible, this, I hope this video especially yesterday's, um, really touched you. And I, if you did change your life and decide to give it over to God, please let me know. I would want to know more than anything if I was able to touch you and let you know more about Christ. Again, I, I try to say stuff. It just doesn't come out right. I can't find the words. But if you have any questions, Please don't be afraid to ask me down below in the comments or you can even, you know, private message me. I would love to answer any questions you have and I'll answer as best as I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll definitely find it for you. So, yes, I hope this video has brought you peace and comfort and I hope you decided, if you're not already, to join me as a daughter in Christ and all right and 
I will see y'all next in the next video. All right. God bless. Love y'all. Bye.